In today's video, we'll see how to recreate the sound interaction with a timed bomb or a mine. Before moving in Unreal, let's have a look at the main scenarios. The first one is that we get close to the mine so that we activate it, we hear a timer, but then we move back so then we can deactivate it and don't listen to the timer, the beep sound anymore. The second scenario is that we enter the range of action of detection of the mine, we activate the timer and we wait until the timer finishes so that we hear the blasting sound. The last scenario is that we get close to the mine, we activate the timer and then we move over the mine before the timer has finished. I decided to use this yellow cylinder as a sort of reference for the mine. You can move to blueprint add script. You can call it timer explosion. New subclass. You can select a folder. Let's say this one and select. Now with your static mesh selected, click over add component and here we need to uh, apply two collision spheres. So select it and we name the first one inner sphere. And we can adjust its sphere radius so that it covers the entire geometry of our uh, mine. Then we can select the static mesh once again add component and we can add a second sphere collision. We're gonna call it outer sphere. And we set its sphere radius to let's say 2500. We move in the viewport so that we can see if uh, the size of the outer sphere it's it's good for us. I think we can increase it to 3000. Great. Last thing we need to apply a sound source. So once again, static mesh, add component, type audio, and here you can select audio component, and we can call it mine emitter. In its detail panel, we can override attenuation, and define a inner radius and a outer radius. Then we can move inside the event graph, select your inner sphere, right click, add event for inner sphere collision, component being overlap. If we enter the inner sphere, we want to hear the sound of explosion but we want to hear it once since if we hear the explosion it means that the bomb the mine has blown away so it doesn't exist anymore so let's apply a do once and we send its completed output to a spawn sound attached from the sound uh, drop down menu we select uh, the explosion sound, here it is. Then we take our mine emitter and we drag and drop it in the viewport. We get uh, this component and we send it to the attached to component. Now we select the other sphere, same process, add event, collision, being overlap. If we enter the other sphere, we want to hear the uh, sound of a timer. So we can spawn sound attached as well with a beep sound. Here it is. And we take our mine emitter and we send it to the attached to component. Since we might enter and exit the other sphere, we don't want to trigger multiple instances of our audio file. So here we need to apply a do once and have a listen.
Great. Now we have a problem is that the timer doesn't stop if we hear the explosion. To improve that, we can drag out from a return value of our uh, timer sound and connect it to a fade out. We disconnect this execution pin. And now we need to understand in which conditions we want to fade out the timer sound. Well, the most simple one is that when we get out of the outer sphere. So select your outer sphere, event, collision, and overlap. And we can send this and overlap to trigger the fade out of our timer sound. We also want to fade out the sound when we enter the inner sphere, so when we hear the explosion. To do so, we can apply between the do ones and the spawn sound attached a sequence so that its first output goes inside the spawn sound attached of the explosion and then its second output we can send it down here close to the fade out and we can apply a is valid node. Why do we need a is valid node? Is that we want to verify if the timer sound is still playing. If so, so we can reference uh, our is valid to the timer sound. If so, the condition is valid and we can fade out our timer sound. We then take our own component and overlap and we send it to the is valid input. And we are not done yet since we need to apply other conditions. First of all, if the audio file finishes, we want to trigger the explosion sound. To do so, we drag out from the spawn sound attached and we use a retriggerable delay. And you set the duration setting to the duration of your audio file. In my case, the beep audio file is 6.5 seconds long. And we take the completed output and we send it to the do ones of our overlap inner sphere. Now, a last thing which could be a more debugging approach is that when we hear the explosion, we don't want to trigger the outer sphere anymore. So we can drag out from the completed output of do ones and connect it to a gate and we set it start closed to false so we uncheck this. We then add a third output to our sequence and we send it to the close input of our gate so that when the retriggerable delay sends its completed output to the do ones we first play the explosion sound then we send its second output to the is valid, which will verify if we can fade out the sound. And the third output of sequence will close the gate so that we can't trigger the system anymore by overlapping our outer sphere. And I was almost forgetting to drag out from fade out and send it to the reset of do ones.